infinite grace and peace to you. Thanks for joining me here on the channel. We're studying the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and I've been reading out of the Ken Wapnick manuals. He has a collection where he does his commentary as he goes through the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and I highly recommend it. So today we're on lesson number 273, The Stillness of the Peace of God is Mine. Perhaps we are now ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility. If this is not yet feasible, we are content and even more satisfied to learn how such a day can be achieved. If we give way to a disturbance, let us learn how to dismiss it and return to peace. We need but tell our minds with certainty, the stillness of the peace of God is mine and nothing can intrude upon that peace that God himself has given to his son. Father, your peace is mine. What need have I to fear that anything can rob me of what you would have me keep? I cannot lose your gifts to me. And so the peace you gave your son is with me still in quietness and in my own eternal love for you. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. And it just came to mind uh, recently, if, if you're watching this, in uh, the end of September 2024, there was a big storm that hit Florida and kept traveling and got stronger and ended up doing a lot of damage in Asheville, North Carolina and the surrounding areas. And um, I just want to take a moment and just imagine the peace of God occurring to anyone that's going through that and um, just noticing how for even just a moment it's possible to pull away from these ideas about there's no power, there's three feet of water in my house, um, my life is over, whatever the thoughts may be that someone who's going through that kind of a crisis might experience. I'm just offering that in the midst of those thoughts there's a peace that occurs to them and that you can take a moment and just come out of that recovery mode and, and stress of getting things back to normal and feel the peace of God, know that nothing happens on accident, know that there is a purpose for all of it and that if it's happening, it's because we volunteered to participate in that it's part of our journey, part of our path. And the worse it is, the more obvious it is that it was a chosen like soul agreement or some level of it's meant to be. So just sending love to anyone who experienced any uh, traumas and devastation during this, this last iteration of weather events. Um, the peace of God is with us all, all the time. All right, so Ken Wapnick talks about a section in the text that I would like to read. He actually pulls out a couple of sentences from this one paragraph, and I want to read that paragraph and the one after it. And it's from chapter 18, The Passing of the Dream. Section one is The Substitute Reality. And we're going to read paragraph seven and eight. When you seem to see some twisted form of the original error rising to frighten you, Say only, God is not fear, but love, and it will disappear. The truth will save you. It has not left you to go out into the mad world and so depart from you. Inward is sanity. Insanity is outside you. You but believe it is the other way that truth is outside and error and guilt within. Your little senseless substitutions touched with insanity and swirling lightly off on a mad course like feathers dancing insanely in the wind have no substance. They fuse, they fuse and merge and separate in shifting and totally meaningless patterns that need not be judged at all. That kind of sounds like a storm, like whatever a hurricane or a tornado sounds like. They fuse and merge and separate in shifting and totally meaningless patterns that need not be judged at all. To judge them individually is pointless. Their tiny differences in form are no real differences at all. None of them matters. That they have in common and nothing else. 
Yet, what else is necessary to make them all the same? Let them all go, dancing in the wind, dipping and turning till they disappear from sight, far, far outside of you, and turn you to the stately calm within, where in holy stillness dwells the living God you never left and who never left you. The Holy Spirit takes you gently by the hand and retraces with you your mad journey outside yourself, leading you gently back to the truth and safety within. He brings all your insane projections and the wild substitutions that you have placed outside you to the truth. Thus, he reverses the course of insanity and restores you to reason. So I'd ask that everyone just take a moment and, and imagine their life being restored to sanity. What was that like? What does it feel like? What, what does it look like? We can turn to the peace of God within always. It never left us. The love of God never left us, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of how much the external world reinforces that there's a reason to be hopeless. There's a reason to be depressed and, and just desperate. And those are all just options of rides that you can ride in this amusement park of life but really none of it is real. It's all very meaningless unless we give it meaning and we can choose to reflect back inside where the peace of God always is. So thank you for joining me today. Again, our lesson 273, the stillness of the peace of God is mine. Claim it today and always. Love you so much. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you back here again on the next video.